Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Peacemaker tries hard. Welcome into Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I am Zach, joined as always by the mercenary, the mercenous, the um. He's a guy who also loves peace, Mike. I've never mercenaried in my I don't life. Know. I realize that a mercenary has nothing to do. I don't with know peace. that I've ever peaced. Either, I was just trying but... to think that um, it's a character that we've honestly covered once before. Yeah, way back when, when we were giving the kind yeah. of Charlton comics or just you know briefly One of my touch favorites. over. Um, but we are taking a look at Peacemaker again today, specifically the 2023 series. So very recent. Uh, Kyle Starks, uh, Steve Pugh, um, six issue run called Peacemaker Tries Hard, which I uh, just finished. And Mike, as somebody who I know we both loved and enjoyed the show, this is the Peacemaker that you enjoyed from that. And it is what I'm used to. He looks like John Cena. Exactly. Definitely. And it's written very well. It was a very funny. I enjoyed it uh, from start to finish, and I thought it would make a great read for us. Uh and again, very recent. Just came out last year. That is one uh, long up. ass gun he's got. It is, uh, and he has a adorable little pug on the cover. Yeah. Again, the entire series, Peacemaker. But even like the hard. veins on his arms look like John Cena's they do. arms. Yeah. Um, and he just kind of has that look. Again, Kyle Starks, the writer, uh, artist Steve Pugh, who I have another book that uh, Pugh did. Um, that's Harley Quinn's Breaking Glass, which is a completely different art style, but also really good too. Wow. Uh, colors Jordi Belair, lettering by Becca Carey, and then the series and collection cover artist because uh, we're looking at the collected edition here today, is uh, Chris Anka. So what we're going, we're going to dive straight into this, Mike, because there's a lot to cover, so yeah, we're not going to dilly-dally around. Uh, we start off issue one with just two people uh, sitting there in line checking out at a uh, grocery store, and they're talking that they see, like, hey, I saw that they're going to make a movie out of Tales of the, Bra- of the Black Freighter. Now, Tales of the Black Freighter, Mike, is the comic book inside the comic that is like Watchmen. Oh, is so, it? So yeah, it tells of the Black oh. Raiders that comic. So it's like an in you you know, they're this they're like, referencing Yeah, it's like Inception of the Inception. Exactly. So they're like, oh, they're making a you know movie about this and they're talking about, oh that's awesome. Like I love How that gonna... comic. One of them was like, yeah, but you know they're gonna mess it up. Like they're gonna change it from the original and it's gonna be different. That's true. It's it starts off, it's a very it's a meta, it's very self aware and I just love this book and mm-hmm. it's whole. And so they're like, yeah, you know, that's what you think. And they're like, oh, they're going to change this. They're going to, you know, not follow along with this. And it's probably because legal reasons or something like that. And the writer and the other guy that's standing next to her is like, or the writers <laughs> just think that they know better. Yeah. Uh, and then we're interrupted with a, and we'll go ahead and say that this is a plus 17 book. So it's going to have the ready when we release this because it's a, a, a very explicit comic before you get into it. But a who the F am I? Like questioning. Who the f- I? Exactly. I mean, it is Just all bolded, big, off big of ass there. letters. Yeah. Um, and we see that it's I'm Peacemaker. And we oh. finally are introduced to in his full costume talking to the cashier who has never heard of him he's only like, buying protein where it's just also, 100% protein, protein, powder. protein powder and we get like an introduction to of peacemaker christopher smith trained from birth to be an expert in hand-to-hand combat and weaponry by a shitty no good P- <laughs> dad so uh he loves peace so much so again it's but i want you to understand those are from, two sentences loves peace so much so much yeah um and then I love this line where he's like, I haven't heard of a lot of a ton of uh, jazz musicians. That doesn't mean they don't exist and they're good at their jobs. 
and the two people behind <laughs> us who have just been flipping through the pages just start, start throwing out jazz musicians like oh miles davis charlie parker <laughs> like they're like they're part of the conversation exactly they are and so we get back like we flash back and forth between these two conversations and the cashier is like what are you making like muscle cake because it's just an instant cake mix instant and cake protein mix powder. and protein 100 percent protein Hold powder. and, yeah. and peacemaker's like Psh, what are you silly there's no such thing as like internet or is muscle cake like is there like now he's then things hey. like, oh, I'm going to go home and see if that's a thing. The people standing behind him in line are still throwing out jazz musicians. Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, like that's all they're doing now. And then the woman goes, so what's your deal anyway? Like you shoot laser beams or something like that? You turn into a fish man. Yeah, he and he's like, no, my deal is I would do anything for peace. I'd even kill for it. So it's like we, this is our reintroduction to the character, and it's just showing you that this is the John Cena character from the Suicide Squad movies and from – the Peacemaker series, or TV show. So it's letting you know, like, if you know him, you kind of get his ideology here, but we're reinstating it for you if you don't know him. And uh, the guy then finally quits naming jazz musicians to just be like, um, would you eat a spoonful of poop for it? And that's when he's like, I don't know how that would contribute to peace at all, but, like, yeah, if I had to, even a bucket full. I need a bucket of poop. Yeah, and then I love the cashier's line because <laughs> she's like, well, with this pooping <laughs> on the case we're gonna have peace any day <laughs> that's funny oh man that's really so good. that's already just to set up like the type of character we're getting into here with yeah that's Maker. excellent love it uh he's driving home in his uh i don't remember what the car was it looks in, like a camaro it is it's an old school uh just muscle car he's chewing Challenger, off beef jerky camaro. when his phone goes off and it's amanda waller or as he has it old work answer or they'll blow up the bomb in your head <laughs> And he's like, I love how he answers, go for Peacemaker. Uh, um, and, of course, it's Amanda Waller, and she's telling him that there's a – She looks like a, her, too. She does. Yeah. Uh, she, that there's a terrorist organization setting up shops, like, across from – or trying to break into Star Labs, and they need her to deal with it. What is Star Labs? Star Labs is, like – it's the it's always in the flash. It's the main, like, you know, laboratory that okay. is there that deals with a lot of – Gotcha. Uh, studies and cases about, like, metahumans and stuff like that. He's got his big peace bird on his on His, his peace bird. Yeah, um, and he's like, I thought I retired from that. And she's like, well, I want to remind you that we kind of still pay your bills and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, yeah, nope, never mind. I must have got turned around. Uh, just tell me where to go, and I'll you know, I'll be there. Um, and while he's on the phone, he's like, hey, is the rest of the Suicide Squad there, by the way? To which we get a flash to that they're all in her office. King Shark's playing Switch, but everybody else is like, no, please don't tell them that we're here. Um, and she's like, or uh, because he goes like i'm planning to get together this weekend and i'd love for him to show up and they're all like no like we're busy tell him we're not there is that so it's harley quinn King shark harley quinn, quinn kill, kill shot uh dead shot dead shot and, and boomerang. boomerang it is oh, the okay. it's the guys from the suicide squad movie too. gotcha um and he's like no they're they're not here like you know they're busy and like she puts them on hold and boomerang tells him like the last time we went over there it got weird he showed us his collection of vhs porn that he found in the woods <laughs> And they're like, and that's the she goes. He said that the or he goes. He said he found in the woods, like mm -hmm. air quotes. And Harley's like, that's disgusting, even for me. King Shark can't be bothered. He's still playing. No. Well, he's and dumb. Also. She lies and goes, hey, uh, nope, they're busy fighting Clayface on another mission. So she lies for him. Yeah. Anyway, Peacemaker shows up, deals with all these mercenaries here. Uh, the joke here is like, so tomorrow we set off a dirty bomb outside the lab. And he's like, what's the difference between a regular bomb and a dirty bomb? Uh, a dirty bomb is when it, its fingers, it sticks your fingers in its butthole when it, and that's when it cuts off for Peacemaker to so, bust in. So it masks, is very much in the vein of the TV show. Are those show masks here. anything? No, not that okay. I know. I, they, I think they're just supposed to be like. I'm thinking pop. of a red mask, I guess, in Marvel, though. Oh, you're talking about the Red Skull? No, the guy who wears the big mask. Baron Zemo? There you go. Okay. What was he called? It was a purple mask, though. Yeah, right? it's purple. Okay. Well, that I'm contributed not, nothing. I've always been more of a DC <laughs> guy. Um, but And I've fallen off when it comes to that MCU. Anyway, so he beats up all these terrorists. Uh, <laughs> he pushes one through the ceiling, and it says ceiling f Yeah. I mean, that's... <laughs> and then punches a guy in the nuts. It says flawless, flawless dictory. Yeah, this, uh, again, I'm not going to be able to point out every single joke in here. Go pick it up and read it. It was absolutely yeah. hilarious. Because there's a point where he's like, no, one of the guys is, oh, no, not you. Last time you busted up our terror cell, you killed half of us in cold blood and made the rest stand around doing dick puppet theater to old musicals. <laughs> and he just stops while he's beating up people. He's like, ah, I remember that. Right? And then he tells him he had the <laughs> smallest dick. Yeah. 
And he's and then one of them, while he's getting beat up, is like dick puppet theater, like confused. And he's like, you know, he makes you act out scenes like little or I mean he act out scenes like little ugly skin puppets. It's hilarious. And he's like, No, you suck. No one likes you. But this is also while he's beating the shit while out of people. While he's beating them all up. I this, mean, there's a guy with a broken neck. There's a guy with fingers going all over the place. I mean, he's just he's still beating people exactly. up, and he's so happy. But we get our main thing, and he's like, no, you suck. No one likes you. And that's why he's, mm-hmm. he's like, what do you mean? Nobody likes me. You're the terrorist. And he's like, yeah, but we're a group of like-minded individuals. Like, we like being around each other. Like, <laughs> nobody wants to hang out with you. And like that's a like this is gonna, this is going to be a point sticking through this series because just like regular Peacemaker and it kind of works with with Deadpool and stuff, the jokes and stuff work when there's actual little like you know yeah. seriousness in there with it. And so um, he stops one of the guys. He calls Waller to tell him that like hey, you know this has kind of been taken care of. And that's when they find well, this stray dog. The guy, he's holding the guy up against the wall by his nose by his nose, his nose hole. Nose. Yeah. And we come across this dog and he's like, oh, I love this dog. And he's like, whose dog is this? And they're like, I don't know. It's a stray. And he's like, oh, I'm going to call him Bruce Wayne because he look looks what, like he's wearing a tuxedo. He look what a little fancy man he is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he calls him Bruce Wayne and he decides to keep him since he's a stray. Like he checks with the cops. The cops don't want him. So Peacemaker finally has a friend. Well, he also asked the cops if they'd come to his party. Oh, that is true. <laughs> and the cop says, no, so we don't I'm know not you. coming to your party. None of us know you. We don't know you, dude. <laughs> That's going to be another thing, too, is he's inviting people to this party this whole time. So it's him driving kind of sad, and he's telling the it's pug. It's that sad John Cena face. It is, and it's him talking to Bruce Wayne, the pug. I will clarify, yeah. not Bruce Wayne, the person. Yeah. And he's like, maybe those guys are right. Like, you know, nobody likes me. Like, I do feel pretty much alone. And he's like, I do so much good stuff, like fighting injustice and defending peace, like, I've saved the world like three times and like nobody even knows who I am. And he's like, I just want to be seen, you know, like acknowledged, like somebody who's worth something. Like, you know. He just wants people to come to his party. He, he does. That's and it. he's like, maybe that's too much to ask. And Bruce Wayne crawls over into. It's such a weird sentence you just said. Bruce Wayne the pug. Yeah. <laughs> crawls over and curls up in Peacemaker's lap. And he kind of tears up a bit. And we get a flashback to him and his dad. And here's uh. the thing, too. I don't know if they couldn't use Robert Patrick's face maybe mm. in doing it, but when they draw maybe. him, yeah. they never show, or maybe it's just because in the comics, like it, it you don't really need to know what his dad looks like, but it no, is but that we same. All know at this well, point, it is. Yeah. I mean, that's what I thought of, and I read it in that vo- voice, but it's that same kind of character. He's and a T one thousand T in Terminator Two. What is yeah. it? T five thousand one thousand. Whatever something one like it that. Is. Yeah, he's the liquid one. He is, and he's like, "Hey, if I hit all the targets on this obstacle course, do you think we could get a dog?" And his dad's like, "No, like I don't trust anything that forms loyalty without an ideology, like you know, blind <laughs> allegiance." Like he just okay. tries to, yeah, he just crushes his you know dreams and all that. God Almighty. Yeah, and the kids like are a young Chris, a uh, young peacemakers like, but maybe a dog superpower is seeing something worth loving in anyone. Which is a very – and he's like, you're so stupid. No one is ever God. going to – like, it's very much – He said no of, one is he, ever going to love he is. you. Like, he's such Jesus. an asshole. Um, and it's very much kind of like Cotton Hill kind of in there, too, is what I hear, He tells me you're going to put him in the moron box yeah. for 48 hours. So – and but you see, the like, we get a box. flashback to current day Peacemaker actually, like, smiling yeah. with pug Bruce Wayne asleep in his lap as he pulls up to his – Little beast. trailer that looks just like the trailer from the TV show. Yeah. So it's, that trailer was not in the comics originally? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't remember. Okay. It. All right. I don't remember him living in a trailer. Yeah. I but, love it. So while he's there, he's greeted by his parole officer who works for Task Force X. He's an old guy and he's yeah. like, you know, damn you, Richard. Can't you, you can't just barge in here. I could have been <laughs> Jane off. And he's like, whoa, whoa, who's this? And he sees the dog. And he's like, oh, that's new Bruce Wayne. And so he kind of talks to his. That's the second time somebody's called that dog a fancy little man. Yeah. His his parole officer, Richard, <laughs> has now called him a fancy little man, too. And he's telling him, like, hey, I just stopped by. Like, we saw that you cross state lines tonight. You can't do that. I got to remind you that you're on your parole. And he's like, oh, Waller called me to do that. You should check with her. And he's like, all right, I will. Just want you to know that if you ever try to violate your parole, like, I always get my man. Well, except for the war will. And he has like a flashback to like World War Two, right? Jeez. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, whatever, you weird old man. <laughs> so, that's not what he says. That's but not what he right, says. Yeah. But if I if I cover yeah, everything, Mike, I got it's going to sure, be. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, and so he walks over to the instant cake mix and he's like, you know, you need eggs for this, right? And he goes, I've seen your fridge. And like all you have is like a half, half empty jar of pickles and a box of mustard. 
our bottle of mustard and peacemaker goes dude it's an instant cake you just add water oh, and he's like Lord. no man like you need eggs and oil and a p- grease for a pan it's like you have a pan right and so he's like you're kidding me right oh, i gotta go back to the store he's got a point that it says instant cake and it it's does. not really instant and he asks can you take dogs grocery shopping and he's like not unless <laughs> it's a service dog or an emotional support he animal so He's so out of touch. He doesn't know he if does. you can take your dog to the grocery and store. And he goes, an emotional support animal, like a donkey. Like a donkey. You. <laughs> and he goes, all right, uh, I'm just going to get out of your hair then. And the parole officer just decides to leave. But before he leaves, he goes, hey, I want to leave you with a jar of honey from my farm. Take care of that handsome pup of yours. Right? And he sets the honey down. Yeah. And we see old Peacemaker back at the store with now dog food and cooking oil and eggs. And the cat, it's the same cashier, and she goes, I hope you do make better at making peace than you are at making lists, or we're all in yeah. trouble. So she's still just giving them. He did need dog food, though. He did. Now so that he we, has a dog. We cut back, and we go in, and there's a note oh. on the door, and somebody has now kidnapped Bruce Wayne, the pug. The water treatment station. And he goes, if you want to see him, come to the water treatment station, sign the brain. And he's like, somebody's going to die. So like, peacemaker. Like Pinky? Huh? Pinky in the no, brain? It is, it oh. is, it is an okay. actual brain. All right. So Peacemaker comes in, and he pops up out of the out of the poop, and he snaps God, this guy's comes neck. comes right up out of the, the sewage The line. sewage, and he snaps oh, this guy's neck. Gross. Then, as he's climbing up to do the next guy, we get a, like a sniff, sniff. Yeah. Oh, what's that nasty smell? And he turns yeah. around, and he goes, yo, like, who are you, man? And he's like, oh, I'm taking out henchmen so I can get the drop on the guy. St- he calls him Dookie Man. Dookie Man. He's like, getting the hench- or dro- uh, the taking out henchmen so I can get the drop on these guys who stole my dog. And he's like, dude, I'm just a city employee. I just work here. And he's like, oh, dude, I think I killed one of the other guys. Then. <laughs> and he's like, was it Gavin? Because he's a registered uh, sex offender, man, and like bad. So I wouldn't sweat that one. <laughs> he did look and like a like, Gavin. And he's like, he did look like a Gavin. <laughs> so then he's like, hey, can I ask you a favor? And he gets him to water hose bad. him off. So after Good we get Lord. there, he's looking for like, where are you, Brain? Give me back my dog. And that's when we see actual Brain, a French mad scientist and a criminal mastermind, Grody Brain in a jar, our Brain in jar situation though. Um, I love and the he use looks of the word up, Grody. He does, and there's Brain there, and he's like, Brain essentially tells him that he is ready to be in a human body again, right? He's tired of being a Brain stuck in a jar, and with the help of his, you know. Uh, talking ape friend talking here. Talking arm, heavily armed Monsoor, gorilla. Monsoor, Monsoor Mala, who was also another uh, villain at one point in time. Like, these are actual DC villains that are, you know, being brought up uh, and okay. not just made for this. Right. He's a hyper-intelligent ape, the product of brain scientific uh, ingenuity. And he's like, the two of you... Uh, that <laughs> skull on the front is awfully close to... Punisher? Yeah. yeah a little bit. Yeah. And he looks up and Peace- Peacemaker is distracted by the grill and he's like, is that a monkey with a heavy machine gun? <laughs> And he likes the monkey only speaks French. And he's like, Mala is saying it is a heavy machine gun. And he's like, oh, that's freaking awesome. Like, he just interrupts him because he's just so excited about the monkey with the machine gun. Anyway, he tells him that, like, I need your help to steal. Like, I have technology to grow my future body. I have the know how. I just need the materials. So my friend slash enemy, General Immortus, who's a Doom Patrol villain, oh, is an he? old guy, yeah. has the key to create the perfect host body for me. And he's like, dude, if you want the perfect body, like, I'm right here. Like, look at these cheekbones. And he's like, no, I'm sorry. Like, I require uh, a, a body that doesn't risk, run the risk of rejecting an intelligent brain, is what he tells him. And he's like, oh, what's that supposed to mean? And he goes, what it means is to say that, like, you don't need me. And so he's like, uh, uh, oh, what I mean to say is, and he cuts him off. And Peacemaker yeah. says, you don't need me or my dog. Like, why don't you just give us back? And your kick-ass monkey can go do all this for you. And he's like, no, I need you to break into the research lab to kind of help me there. And he's like, like you, I need you to be that hero, Peacemaker, for I need this mission not to fail. Like, I need a champion, and you're that guy. And he's like, yeah. So I ask you, like, to be my hero. Can you do that? Or... You know, we're going to have my monster Mala here eat your dog. And he's like, <laughs> he said, that's messed up. He does. Yeah. He's like, OK, dude, I don't know what you what you were even thinking about. Like, I don't even want to think about picking like, you know, bits of uh, Bruce Wayne out of gorilla poop. But like <laughs> I can give him the proper burial he deserves. Like, what do I need to do? Just tell me. And he's like, bring me the genetic material of Deathstroke. The Terminator. You know who Deathstroke is, yeah. right? The mm-hmm. big villain. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Peacemaker's like, oh, man, because he knows, like, Deathstroke is 
like the number one end all be all mercenary. Yeah. Like yeah. he goes toe to toe with Batman. He just hand to hand combat guy, but he has been the main villain of the Will Teen Smith? Titans forever. No, that's a dead shot. Oh, okay. I always get confused. On Deathstroke was never in um, the he movie. Wasn't. He was Joe Manganiello at the end of uh, Justice League, and oh. the cam- the cameo there. But You're still, he's been in other stuff. One by he who not, shall not be named. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's okay. the thing. Um, Deadpool is a direct ripoff of Deathstroke. Oh, really? Yeah. Like Death uh, Deathstroke's name is Slade Wilson. What's Deadpool's name? Wade Wilson. Yeah, like Deathstroke was a masked mercenary who huh. fought with swords. And like huh. the thing is, like Rob Liefeld just wanted to. The joke was he just wanted to draw Deathstroke, so he made Deadpool. Yeah, okay. but All and right. then Deadpool turned into his own thing. But still, sure. So like Peacemaker's like, oh man, this is beautiful art, by the way. Oh, it is it's just gorgeous. And so he's like, "All right, so that's where we end issue one. Issue two, we pick back up, and he's like, okay, I love that cover. Oh, I do too. He's like, so you want me to go and beat up Deathstroke? Deathstroke back to back, or uh." Peacemaker back to back with the French monkey. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, and he goes, so you want me to go kick Deathstroke's ass and get his DNA so you can grow a new body? And the brain of monkey looks so confused. And then they laugh. And they're like, no, if we needed somebody to defeat Deathstroke, we would have stolen Batman's dog. Like, uh. you know, and even then, like, those odds are 50-50. Like, we know that he can beat Batman. But, like, if we needed somebody to beat him, we just need you to simply, like, break in some to the secret base and just steal DNA for me. Like, that's all I need. And he's like, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> so he asked him like, Sorry, all right, I, I need proof. Yeah. I need proof of that. Bruce Wayne's still okay. And so they show him proof and it's just it's a, like a hologram. It's a hologram, but he's just looking his butt hey, look and he's like, Oh, that's my special little boy. All right. Like he's already attached. He's to, had this dog for like three hours and he's already attached to him. Yeah. So while Peacemaker and the monkey are driving, Peacemaker's upset and he's like, dude, I'm way better than Batman. Like that guy's been fighting crime for a while, or the same clown for like, what, 20 years? If I had 20 years, I'd beat up like, what, 8 billion clowns? <laughs> like he can't even kill one. Like, you know, he's just still upset by the comment. Yeah. And he gets there and he's like, all right, let me grab his stuff real quick. And these little next door neighbor kids come in to pick on him. And <laughs> Monsieur Mala. I just love that. Yeah, Monsieur Mala just rips a tree out of the ground and kind of throws it at the kids. And the kids run away scared or scared. That should scare the shit out of any kid. It did. And so he's like, oh, that's awesome, man. Like, I'm so that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like, Peacemaker's so in love with this gorilla already. So he's there. He's grabbing stuff, all the weapons he wants. And Monsieur Mala starts eating the honey. And Peacemaker's like, dude, I want to eat that. Like, you know that honey's bee poop, right? And like the gorilla just looks at him and he's like, don't look at me like that. Like, you know where honey comes from. And he's like, what, you think bees have, like, a special hole that just honey comes out of? And he's like, it's either piss or poop, man. He's like, you know, it's your guess at best. And best case scenario, it's either that or it's bee puke. Like, it's all, it's gross all the way around. He says, he's like, so I don't know what you're doing. He says specifically, you think bees got a special honey hole they make honey with? Yeah. Jesus. And so, like, the gorilla just looks at him like he's an idiot and just keeps eating the honey. And Peacemaker shows off his collection of helmets, which we saw in the TV show. <laughs> it says X-ray vision. One of them says F-ck beam. Yeah. And wow. he's about to use that one. Um, he's going to so use the f-ck beam? He one? will be. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, Shrinkage, and he goes, I never know rocket. which one to use. And he's kind of showcasing them all. Uh, Bane voice. One of them just says Bane yeah, voice. Yeah, one says Bane voice on it. <laughs> and like the monkey points at one that just says shrinkage. And he goes, yeah. that one shoots a beam that recreates how your man bits act when you get in cold water. Imagine you're throwing hands and suddenly <laughs> your dick and balls start turtling up inside you. Uh, and he's wow. like, it's a total mind death, man. And he's like, that's a fight. A fight I win every time. Um, so they're going through these helmets. Do we? Who who makes the helmets? His dad made them. Oh, helmets. that's right. His dad made So that's made what the he helmets. goes. That's he right. goes, my dad made these. Maybe yeah. the only nice thing he ever did. I'm oh, not crying, shit. by the All way. I, I got a scratch cordia, and I'm tearing up because of those, seri- those terrorists earlier. Man, my eyes just leaking. <laughs> and Monsieur Mala says something in French. And I love Maker- that we're not privy to we- what he's what he saying. What he says, like he's just yeah. speaking French. Yeah. Uh, and Peacemaker wipes his eyes, and he's like, I don't understand what you're saying, dude. I can only speak American. <laughs> I can only speak American. But I think you're being kind, and that's a lot more than my dad ever did. Uh. And so he says, screw it. I'm taking this one. And he takes the uh, beam. Yep. And so then they're driving to go out to the middle of nowhere for this place and uh, or for the mission they're headed. And the gorilla goes to change the radio and Peacemaker goes like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Everybody knows driver controls well, the. Hang on one second. Go back down. First, it says smoke silk cuts with my dude, Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's the song they're listening what's, to. Do you know what that no song clue. is? Okay. All right. 
Um, and then ask him what his plan for all this. It could be made up. Um, it could be. But, oh, uh, he goes, bro, do you like mucous membrane? So, see, it might be a made-up band. Oh, okay. Uh, and he, like, spe- or it could be a band named Mucous Membrane. And so, like, the grill, like, speaks in French because he just turns the music up instead. And he goes, you know, I thought when I was going to, like, saddle with some stupid villainous gorilla henchman sit to babysit me, like, I thought it would be a pain. But you're really cool, man. Like, I'm glad we're hanging out. And he's like, man, I got this party coming up this weekend. Like, do you want to come to it? And he's like, and he just gives him a thumbs up. And he's like, hell yeah, <laughs> crank it up. And so they turn out, and the two of them are just jamming out wow. right to this music. Look at him go. And then we go back to the dude with the beard. The dude with the beard. His parole, his parole officer. His parole okay. officer, yeah. who's out tending to his bees, and he's sitting there, and he gets a buzz, and one lens. He goes, "Look, looking really good, my friend. Stay strong and healthy." One second, and he pulls it out, and he goes, "Where are you off to, peacemaker?" Mm. His parole officer knows he's headed out somewhere. Well, that somewhere's in the middle of nowhere. And there's just like a little guard shack out there. And he's like, I guess we're in the right place. The guard shack just has a sign that says, don't mind us. Our mess, we're under construction. <laughs> it is so but small. But it's the only place around. It's like the it's like the size of an outhouse, maybe. Yeah. So he's but like, with oh. a steel door on it, even though it's made out of wood. Exactly. So yeah. they're trying to figure Lovely. out if they're going to have to blow in. And turns out it's just unlocked. So there's are able to stroll right in. Oh, it goes right. And they down. have like henchmen. Enjoy your hinch car. Or enjoy your henchcation. Henchcation while we renovate. <laughs> and there's like a henchman of the month there on the thing with like oh, scar. That's fantastic. Or like Tom Sampson. He's like, where is everyone? And the thing is, is this needs to be a thing, other than a comic. This just needs to be a thing. The thing is, and the thing is, is you hear pick up the pace dem- demolition team, because there's the, the demolition team, supervillain construction team. Evil laborers, but good union folks. <laughs> Their dues are always up to date. That is right. And Demolition Team was created in the 80s, Mike. It is another DC property. Really? Uh, back then, there were super villains with like high tech gear that were like construction themed and stuff in a way. Yeah, yeah. But in this, they are being used. They are helping to construct evil layers, which right. I think is absolutely fantastic. I love that they just all have like a and, DT on their chest. Yeah, for too. the demolition, demolition team. team. And they all have like construction themed like power stuff that their they pants use. pants look a lot like Peacemaker's pants, though. They kind of do. And they're like, all right, that's a, that's a nice hole right there, guys, man. That's a great <laughs> trap door. That sign that says rotating blade hazard. Yeah, and it's two like, rotating blades and half a guy on it. Like, like he's got. All right, steamroller. Hey, we need to go ahead and test this death trap. Go ahead and get our death trap dog. Uh, diagnostic device and he's like all right here i got one right now one bag of kittens oh my lord and so they toss the tag <laughs> up, or they grow over there and peacemaker's like oh my goodness evil construction workers is nothing sacred and about that time he's uh. confused he's like do we do one at a time or like the whole bag he's just holding up a cat and like he's, he's gonna throw him down a cat into over this like blazing death yeah. trap but don't worry Peacemaker's not going to allow any animals to be harmed. Shoots him right because through the right brain. through the head, and the cat, the bag of cats are dropped, and they just run away to safety, while Peacemaker just starts unloading his gun. <laughs> he said, on "That's why we always wear our hard, hard hats." hats. <laughs> There's a lot of one-off it's jokes fantastic. like that too. Because yeah. then, like, demolition team yells back, "This is a closed site. Authorized personnel only." <laughs> the freaking monkey's walking around with like a gat. The, the gun. heavy machine gun, man. Oh. And so a battle ensues between the two of them. Yeah. Like even with uh, construction theme sound effects. And it's great. Uh, Peacemaker throws a grenade. Scoop Shovel just uses his little scoop to like knock it right back at him. He's like, are you kidding me? And it blows the grenade blows off and just kind of (laughs) like away. But then Peacemaker sends out his uh, His vision. Yeah. And it just says. (laughs) <laughs> on the theme that's there that goes through that's all you see is a sound effect like again Fantastic. everybody who worked on this did a tremendous job oh it's wonderful the coloring is on point yeah, the lettering great. is great yeah. the art just all of it the story really it's fantastic even the the alternate covers so they end up beating up this oh the joke here is they're trying to get help from uh J- uh jackhammer or no, Jackhammer is getting uh, choked out, and so they're trying to get help from a guy named Hardhat. Okay. They're like, Hardhat, what the hell's going on? Like, come on! And he's like, I'm on my lunch break. Hardhat like, is kind of their leader, I guess. He's one of them. He's the okay. union leader, and he's like, I get a mandated 30 minute break every four hours of work. You got a problem with that? Like, take it up with your union steward. And she's trying to get Hardhat to help because Jackhammer is getting choked, and she's like, Jackhammer is our union steward. Like, I can't take it up with him because he's yeah. getting choked yeah. right now. Um. Anyway, they go through. Cool. Here I go. Collision. Collisioned. Yeah. Whenever he throws people at each other, it says collisioned. So the two of them 
are able to beat up the dem demolition team. They're like, yeah, we did awesome. And he's like, hey, lunch break, dude. Like, why don't you just tell us where the general keeps his valuables? And he just points. Like, he just points there towards the vault where everything's held out. While by the, the way, the kittens are all loose. Now. Are loose. Just, just running, running around. around. It's yeah. one of them's digging in his lunchbox. Yeah. And so, look, and he's got a collection of, like, Wonder Woman's underwear and, like, Gingold, which is what makes Plastic Man. What's the, what's the one with the guy with the – what is that over there? The guy what? with the crazy hair. You know that guy, Mike. Flame. Snowflame. Is that the guy who had AIDS? No, oh. no, you're thinking right though. That's the guy who. How did he get his powers? I don't know. It's the same issue. I don't remember. He got from sniffing cocaine. Oh, that's right. That's right. He is the cocaine guy. Yeah, that's yeah, one yeah, of yeah. our throwbacks, okay, okay. Mike. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That was our throwback to our second episode I ever. Got it, with I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, this is all really cool stuff because like all of it is Ding an actual gold thing. is in there, which is yeah. what oh uh, the plastic man or elongated man would drink. Like it's all little. Like tidbits, I think there's like yeah. Steel's mask again, Wonder cool. Woman's underwear. Um, Wonder Woman's underwear, and like he knocks over a bowl, and he's like, "You knocked over my bowl of hard candies." Now there's gonna be little carpet hairs mixed in with them, and it'll be <laughs> utterly ruined. <laughs> and we're agreed to General Immortus. Oh boy, he looks mean. He walks in and he just starts punching Peacemaker. Well, the problem is he looks super mean and big and menacing, and then you see him next to Peacemaker, and he's like half his size. Yeah, he's like hundred years old and looks at. Yeah. And he walks over. And he forgets halfway through there, like, what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, wait, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. I've done this long enough. Like, I need to go get my death machine. Wait, wait, what did I come over here for? And Peacemaker's <laughs> like, all right, let's just find. Machine. He's like, let's just find what we came here for and let's get out of here. Oh, my God. He found his death machine, but then he needs his glasses. That thing is effing huge. To operate it. So Peacemaker just walks over and, like, flicks him in the nose. And he's like, yeah, whatever. He just knocks and him knocks out. him out that way. And he's like, ha, I found it. And he's like, wait, it's a hair. And he's like, is this a pube or like a mustache <laughs> hair man and he's like i don't care never mind this is this is on you and he tosses it to the gorilla and they get out of there and peacemaker now has a cat that he's carrying too and he's like life is funny man like it, it's messed up you guys stole my dog to blackmail me into this <laughs> but i'm honestly glad it happened because like you know we had a really great time in there today dude and then about that time and he's like i think i really made a friend and he hears and the gorilla just uh machine guns him directly into the back uh and brain goes like were you successful monster mala and we find out that the gorilla can speak english and he's like we've acquired the material my dear brain and that's when he's like you speak english and he's like oh but of course like i'm a genius i speak a lot of Eng or a, a lot of languages i just didn't want to speak to a cretin like you and he's like ha did you really believe we were friends man he's like He's so stupid. It made Stoopy. me physically ill to be near him with his awful music and his insane blathering. Wow. And he's just like sitting there like uh, he's like there. There wasn't anyone there. So like we really didn't even need him. Like they were honestly just going to use him as collateral to like help get in to break things. And he's like, you're going to have to hear what this imbecile thinks honey comes from, man. And he's like, you'll die from laughter. And so like the team is like, oh, and we're going to go ahead and keep his dog. Like I find him just utterly delightful. So whatever, just leave him there to die. Like we're good, and that's Jeez. where issue two ends. Issue three, as we get into, we see where he has he being peacemaker. Well, first of all, we get a flashback of where he comes home beat again. No face. Yeah, his dad's face is always blacked out. We get it where he comes home beaten up, and he tells his dad like, "Hey, somebody stole my bike. Like you got to help me like get it back." And he's like. And he's like, there's like four grown men of them. And he's like, what would four grown men want with your bicep? He was like, I don't know, man. They just seem chaotic. But like, will you help me get it back? And it's like, are you kidding me? Like, he laughs at him. And he's like, I took, you know, like bullet shells from the firing range to scraps for two summers to afford that. Like, won't you? And he's like, it's not happening, kid. I can't be associated with this. Like, you humiliate me. Jesus. Like, you know, he's like, if what you want to do it, go handle it yourself. He's like, I'm not going to help you. He's like, you know who wants to help, a, a, you know, somebody like you? No one. Because no one turd. cares about, says, yeah. Who wants to help a turd? Yeah, he's because nobody cares about a useless thing like you. Yeah. He goes, now get out of my face or I'll black your other eye. Jeez. And that's where we cut back to um, current day. And Peacemaker stumbles into a bar, like all beaten up and all just bloody. And he like walks, his back is just meat. And he walks into the women's bathroom. And the group of guys sitting there goes, did that fellow just walk into the ladies' room? That's all they're concerned with. They are. And like he's looking in there in the mirror, like all beaten up. Well, he's obviously got um, 
padding underneath that suit, he does. right? It's most it's, we find out it's mainly bulletproof, but it's, but it's still, still a lot of blood. Yeah, he's still got a lot of blood, and he's still trying to fix himself. And even up. bulletproof stuff beats the shit out of you. Yeah, you and he, with it. he comes out of there and he orders three orange juices, and he has like he's used the tampons and the maxi pads in the women's bathroom to like patch himself up, and the bartender goes like, "You okay, Mister?" And he goes, "Well, if I'm going to be honest with you, like I'm becoming really aware that." I'm incredibly unlikable, and no one wants to spend any time with me. <laughs> Poor and my friend is a dog that I just met, and like he probably doesn't know me that well enough to make decisions on like if he actually likes me or not. And it's a it's weird anyway because like some dudes kidnapped him and they tricked me into helping him, but then I helped them, and I thought they were my friends, but they really weren't. And like I was so desperate to make friends that I didn't even realize it, and they turned on me. The people who saw my dog, and like he you know shot me in the back, and he betrayed me and tried to kill me, and now I'm sitting here just like. You know, my current existence is fraught with utter loneliness and all in company and incompetence. I'm unloved, worthless failure. And it's no one needs in their lives. And she Jeez. goes, I just meant like maybe you need a doctor or something because you've got a tampon stuck in one of your wounds there. And he kind of looks down at it and it's like well, he's got all those pads and all those tampons sticking through. And he goes, yeah, uh, I'm in tremendous pain. So the three men come up and they tell him, like, we don't allow supervillains at this bar. What the hell are they going to do about it if, the, if he was? And he's like, well, I'm not a supervillain. I'm a superhero. And they're like, well, bursting into the ladies' room isn't very heroic. And he's like, well, yeah, that, that's fair. And he's like, I'm assume, I assume that being in the middle of nowhere, in a, a racing bar in the middle of nowhere, it was unlikely there'd be anyone in there and I could use the feminine dispenser. And the bartender's like, yeah, it is kind of just a real sausage party in here all the time. <laughs> so... Uh, that's when they're like, oh, I think he's using them as band-aids and stuff like that. The quote is, I believe this fella is using a feminine napkin as, as a band-aid. Band yeah. yeah. That, that's very like um, Raising Arizona yes. type quote. Yeah. Very much so. And so they're like, you know, you must not be a good superhero if you're looking like this. And you're like, you know, you're right. Uh, I used to make the world a peaceful place, but I, it's not more peaceful. Like, it's just more messed up. Like, everything I do, man. I just mess it up. And the old guy's like, are you crying? Superheroes don't cry. And he's like, everyone cries, damn it. Which is a very good point. <laughs> everyone does. But then demolition oh, no, team shows up. there's a demolition up, team. And while they're there, he doesn't want to mess with them. He's like, listen, we don't hire. He's like, I don't want any trouble. Like, Mala was the one who came in and did that stuff. Like, I didn't do anything. And they're like, oh, yeah, you killed Steamroller. And he's like, oh, damn it, I did. Like, he forgot about that. <laughs> uh, he's like, he gives oh, it to Delmont. And he's like, yeah, he goes, Delmont, you can handle it. So Delmont's like, you know, go ahead and get out. Of, there's no super villains in here. Oh. And they just begin to beat the mess out of Delmont. And oh, think, no. he's like, well, Delmont's dead is what he <laughs> says. Um, I think like, I love how they're like they their biggest thing is like 63 days without a worksite incident. That's how long it's been. You know how many safety meetings we're going to have to go to now? <laughs> and they're all and he's like, we had bonuses on the way is what he says when he goes. And he hurls orange juice in his face. And one of the guys, he's like, orange juice in the eyes? You might as well throw an acid. <laughs> like, that's oh, so great. Like, he so beans, beans an ashtray off one of their heads. And, like, he just essentially beats them all up uh, through the process here. And after they get done, like, the other two, because Delmont's knocked out, are like, wow, that is really <laughs> I wish impressive. Delmont could have seen that, yeah. says his friend. Yeah, says his friend. He's like, yeah, that was pretty badass, wasn't it? And one of the demolition team goes, it was really some fine work. And he's like, man, shut up, Scoop Shovel. Like, <laughs> even, the, even the villain's like, oh, yeah, no, dude, that was pretty cool the way you took us out like that. So he's like, maybe I don't suck. But, you know, I, 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 maybe I do suck, but I don't suck compared to these guys. I suck compared to guys like Green Lantern. Like, you know, I suck to, like, real heroes, man. Yeah. Not like guys like this. And he's like, I'm going to go save my dog. There you go. So he decides to leave, and he heads out, and he goes back to his apartment. And he bandages himself up, and he goes, "Let's do this." And fresh, as soon as fresh he gets uniform, there, fresh uniform, fresh helmet, fresh uniform, fresh everything, he bursts out of his trailer, right? And he's ready to go. And Richard, his parole officer, is there, and he's like, "Where do you think you're going, Chris?" He's like, "You crossed state lines again without approval, and that's a violation, man." I told you you couldn't do that, and he's like, "I don't have time for this, Richard." And he's like, "I wish it didn't have to be like this, but you broke the rules, and now like you only have yourself to blame." He's like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, don't touch me. Like, he's trying to stop him. He's like, I'm serious, Chris. You're going back to prison. And he's like, I've got something I got to do. I swear I'll crumple an old man if I have to, Richard. And he's like, I'll crumple 18 old men if I have to. And he goes, I'm doing my job, Chris. Like, come on, we're going back to jail. 
So Peacemaker lunges at him. He's like, if you want to go so badly, all right, I'll beat up an old man. And Richard handles him very well. He dodges out of the way. Richard's like, using How? like almost jujitsu or something like that to kind of feign off his, you know, it very Mr. Miyagi like. Very much so. Yeah. And he's like, "How?" He doesn't get it. And about that time, boom! Richard clocks him right in the face, and he's like, "What are you doing?" And he goes, "You think Amanda Waller, Richard is parole agent. Yeah. You think Amanda Waller hires just anyone to be her parole officer?" Which is a very good point. It is a very good point. Yeah. And he's like. You know, he's like, I'm responsible for making sure dozens of superpowered ex-convicts follows the rules of their release. As he's sitting there just beating just up punching the crap out still, of Peacemaker, right? yeah. And he's like, dude, you're really going to lose to an old man? Like, he's talking to himself. Yeah. And he's like, it's nothing to be ashamed of. And about that time, like, Peacemaker grabs him around the throat and he starts choking him out. And he goes, I told you, I got a mission and nothing is going to stop me. And about that time, a bee flies by. <laughs> and he's like, ah! What the heck? It's a bee. <laughs> this like bee red psycho. Bee. Yeah. Yeah. Richard uses the fact that Peacemaker gets distracted by that bee to kick him in the face. And he goes, I hate that you forced me to do that, but uh, I didn't need to be like this. And he goes, no, like it can't end like this. This isn't ca- how it goes out. Like I have to go. I have to go, Richard. They took Bruce Wayne and he needs me. He's all alone, Richard, please. And he goes, wait, wait, what happened to Bruce Wayne? Someone took your dog? Cause he, you know, he was there with first. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes, what's going on, Chris? And so he tells him, he goes, are you sure man. about this, Richard? Uh, he, he goes, won't you get in trouble for helping me? And he goes, a man's got to do what's right, Chris. And I got my uh, and I got my friends uh, happy to cover my cases for me. And Peacemaker goes, I really appreciate this, dude. And uh, his parole officer goes, who wouldn't drop everything, you know, to help you rescue a dog? A monster, that's who. And he goes, so what's your deal? You used to be some badass hero? And he tells him. Yeah, once upon a time, long ago, they called me the Red Bee. Oh, my God. Come on. Wow. That's fantastic. (laughs) There was a reason, Mike, that I set up Red Bee for us. I was going to do it a couple weeks to let it stew more. I love that he has the pirate sleeves. And then I had to change it. I had to change it around so they were back-to-back weeks. But I was going to let it stew more. But when I found out about this. Good job. So, and here's the beauty of it, Mike. He question looks, he looks badass is this he red does. B, though? questions questions we had last week some of them are answered mm. so he goes they called me the red b and uh the red b <laughs> is very much i don't think much, he talked that he way he didn't talk like that he's got so much more vim he's and vigor jumping, he's jumping into a nazi encampment he says gird your loins you nazi f-ks. yeah so <laughs> this is this isn't your this isn't your grandfather's red b here um but as he so he they turned him into a nazi fighter which fi- that w- fits with the time frame though too here's the thing in story yeah this is the same red b essentially yeah absolutely so you have to absolutely. think the not the, the the guy who told him to gird their loins is the same red b who jumped from the da's car going 90 miles an hour yeah yeah and it all kind of fits doesn't it because he's like yeah the red b's here to kick your cocks off so <laughs> This is very much like a like a kick ass well, like he's very, the boys. He's type very Red peacemaker kind of here, you know. Yeah, I'm here to kick your cocks off. Oh man! So, uh, and then he's like, "What's the deal with you enacting a one man war on subtlety? Oh, What's up with those sleeves? You're wearing some super blouse, my guy." So he calls <laughs> him out for it, and Redby's just like, "No, that was just kind of the the style of them. You know, it just looked good. Like everybody liked it." Uh, and he goes the rage back then, like you know. And plus, this uh, he goes this costume struck fear into ne'er do wells. No. Nope. And he's like, so why'd you call yourself the Red Bee? Like, do you have some like stinger gun or something? And he's like, no gun, just a good right hook and some trained bees. <laughs> so he's like, we're staying with everything is the same from our Red Bee, which again, I loved this. Oh, I loved this so much. And he's like, you can control bees like a whole swarm, man. That's awesome. And he goes, no, uh, I just have one. And he goes. <laughs> What do you mean you have one B? And he goes, bees are like friends, Chris. You only need one if it's a really good one. And the look that he like rolls his eyes at him and he goes, I keep it in my belt buckle. So he's even in the like. The yeah. Thing. Yeah. And Peacemaker's like, you're messing with me, right? And he's like, uh, I don't know, man. Maybe we can't do this. Like, I don't know if I've got what it takes anymore. And you're an old man with a B. <laughs> and he's like, have a little faith, Chris. You know, and he's like, you know, uh, Waller only puts me on the most dangerous cases, right? I wouldn't be here if you weren't a, fo- a force to be reckoned with. And it shows him meeting with 
Um, it shows Richard meeting with Amanda Waller, and she goes, all right, your next one's easy. One for you, Richard. Gas is sharp as a sack of wet mice. <laughs> oh, man. So they're like, all right, let's go save your dog. And that is where the halfway point for us with Peacemaker tries hard, as it is now the Red Bee, and we're getting to the crux of our story, the Red Bee and Peacemaker are going to go hunt down Pug Bruce Wayne. That is awesome. It is. So we're going to take a break right here, and we'll come back and wrap up our story after this right here on Bros, Foes, and Heroes. And welcome back to Bros, Foes, and Heroes. As we continue with Peacemaker Tries Hard, we have issues four through six coming up here to close out um, the story for us. It's all collected here in these six issues. But uh, so far, yeah, no, I'd been so excited, Mike, and I'd been hanging on to the fact that the Red Bee was going to be in here. Yeah, that, uh, that is so cool. It, and uh, I really like um, what they do with the Red Bee here, but we'll we'll see all that. And, you that know, it was really great. Yeah. It, it was. Um, so we'll kick off. Uh, number four here, where we see General Immortus again, and they're at a McShoney's. Now, a McShoney's, I'm assuming, is kind of like a Shoney or a um, just a regular, uh, yeah, it was a Shoney's or yeah, a, Shoney's. like yeah. a diner or a, what's another diner that we have? Um, uh, it's kind of like a Denny's. Yeah, or but I mean, yeah. it's it's like it's just like an old yeah. diner there. Yeah, and um, that they're eating. Oh, at. this old. Yeah, head. General Immortus is back again. And I, he's just such an a-hole because he's, like, talking to his waitress, and he's like, sweetheart, this is the third time I coffee emptied without a refill. That means I'll take another dollar off the table. You know, like, it's yeah. weird. Yeah. Old people thing. Um, and so uh, he walks up uh, while he's eating there. Uh, Peacemaker and Red B come to join him. And General Mortis is like, how did you find me here? And he's like, yeah, I know you old people and you're McShoney's. Like, it was 20 minutes away. You guys can't resist it. All I had to do was just camp out and wait. Um, and I love how both, like, Peacemaker and Red Bee just show up in costume. Yeah. So they're trying to tell him, like, hey, like, I need to get the information of where to find Brain and uh, Monster Mala then. Because, like, they have my um, dog that I want to get him back. And he's like, well, why would I help you? And he goes, well, because if you don't, like. I'll sit here and oh, what are the two jokes? Um, he goes, oh, you know, oh, you do know with just a push of a button, I can have a hundred armored mechs to send on this place and render you in pieces, like to destroy them. And peacemakers like and risk, you know, damaging your precious little diner here. What are you gonna do? Start making your own pecan pie? <laughs> and he goes, all right, you called my bluff. Fine, leave me in my pecan pie. And that's where he's like, no, like, you know, you're gonna tell us where the brain is at. And he's like, and if I don't. And he sits there, and I, I love this. He's like, why would I tell you anything? And Red B looks at him, and he goes, just like we practice in the car, okay? And he <laughs> sits there, and he grabs the, like, napkin dispenser. He goes, because if you don't, uh, and then he panics. And he goes, I'm going to shove this napkin dispenser all the way up your old wrinkly ass. And you can see Red <laughs> B's eyes, like, that's not what they practiced in the car, which is hilarious. And uh, General Mortis is just like, I was alive, you know, at the dawn of man, boy. I've touched every spot on this wretched planet and drew blood on most. I've lived countless years with endless time. There's nothing I've not seen or done. Do you think honest or do you honestly think that in all my long life I've never had a nap in a dispenser <laughs> in my rectum? Do you really consider that a threat to me? Uh, and then there's just a panel where he's sitting there and he just like taps the dispenser. He's pointing at it. And Immortus looks at him again and he goes. Well, you'd be right. It was incredibly uncomfortable, and I despised <laughs> it. You boys are really refuting all my bluffs today, oh, <laughs> which wow. I think is hilarious. That's funny. So he I just love the fact that they don't take these these superheroes too seriously. No, and it's in hilarious this. in that yeah. way. And so he's like, all right, I'll go ahead and give you the, where Brain's headquarters are. So Peacemaker decides to call Amanda Waller, and she, Peacemaker comes up on Amanda Waller's phone as the idiot. That's it. That's all it says on there. When it buzzes uh, and he picks it up and he's like, Waller, I need your help. I need a tactical strike uh, strike team and an SS one transport. And Amanda Waller's like, this is my personal line peacemaker. Like I don't do things for you. You do things for me. That's not how this works. And he goes, but Bruce Wayne's been kidnapped. And she goes, Bruce Wayne's been kidnapped. And so that's, she starts freaking out. She's like prep task force X immediately take off and get me the justice League of America on the phone. 
but Task Force X is out like trying to find who the Star Lab. And she's like, I don't care. Get them. Like she's like, Bruce Wayne's been kidnapped. <laughs> and he, and she's like, How do you know Bruce Wayne? How do you know he's been kidnapped? And he's like, Well, I met him at that terrorist thing you sent me to the other day, and we really hit it off. He was at my home when we he was abducted. And she's like, <laughs> Bruce Wayne, what was Bruce Wayne doing at your home? And he's like, eating beanie weenies and chilling out, being adorable. And she's like, beanie weenies? Hold on. Are you sure that we're talking about the same Bruce Wayne? Can you describe him? What was he wearing? And he goes, he's a fancy boy. Very handsome. Fancy perfect boy. little nose. Looks like he's wearing a nice suit. And Waller goes, yep, that's definitely him. All right. All right. I'm taking personal interest in this, in this, Chris. We'll meet you in 15 uh, so minutes and rain hellfire on whoever did this. And Peacemaker celebrates. And he goes, yeah, we're getting my dog back. <laughs> and that's when she goes, she your, your dog. And he's like, dude, no, no, really. Like you, you I didn't think that you'd take this so seriously, but I'm stoked. And she goes, we're talking about a dog named Bruce Wayne. And he's, and then you just hear, uh, hey, I, I, you know, I thought you guys didn't like me, but now I know I've, I've turned around. I'm still having this party. Click. God, Hello. Hello. And she like flips open the switch on the oh, bomb on his neck like for a second. Blow his freaking and head she off. just thinks about it for a second. And then she just sighs and like holds her hand and uh, her hands, her head in her hands. And he's like, all right, well, never mind. They're not going to help us. And uh, the Red B's like, oh don't worry. God. I got something who can get us from A to B. B-E. And he's like, B puns. Really? Because that was a thing that he used yeah. last time, too. Yeah. So what they do, and I love this, too. He introduces him to a fire pilot named Johnny Blackhawk. Now, the Blackhawks were also a quality comics comic at that time. Okay. And military comics. So it was in a different where Red B was in uh, hit comics under like so quality was the DC <laughs> and they had different, you know, so they were both under the same company. So yeah. it was, yeah. it, you know, Red B and Blackhawk are in the same quality universe in a way. So they're reusing a war pilot from, uh, you know, the military comics from that time. So yeah. Johnny Blackhawk is actual an actual comic book character then, too. Johnny Blackhawk. So he's old. He's going to fly them to where they need to go to this base to hunt down uh, Brain and uh, Monster Mala. And we get a flashback because he's like, how in the world is he like old? He, this dude's old. Like, how is he still around to fly if he flew in World War II? And we get a throwback to like what's supposed to be. I love the throwbacks <laughs> here. And he's like, listen, Johnny, you got it, what it takes to fly, but no question. But you sure you're 18? And he's like, absolutely. And he's wearing like giant, like, he's a little tiny bottle. kid in a giant coat. Yeah, just giant glasses. With a big sucker. And a giant sucker. And it's just hilarious looking. But he's going to be able to get him there. And he tells him, he's like, no, or this is not a team up. Like, I was hoping for, man. He's like, I was hoping for a lot more. I was hoping for Harley or Deadshot. He's like, I'd even take King Shark, even though he smells like seafood section of a grocery store. <laughs> like, I don't know what we're doing here. This isn't a great team. And Red B tells him, like, hey, Chris, I assure you. This is a team that's going to get your dog back, man. No question about it. And he's like, dude, honestly, I don't get how you can be so positive all the time. Is what Peacemaker tells him. And then we get a flashback of Red B with his battalion there in World War II, right? And he's like, they're sending us to stop the war wheel. And he's like, oh, that thing's the worst thing. But if anybody can do it, it's us. It's our group here with the Red B. And he's like, man, we're like a hot knife through uh, Nazi butter thanks to Richard. And even the guys are like, hey. That's red B to you, private. Like, it's a little corny, you know. Yeah, sure. But it just shows you that, like, he's with his battalion and the guys he fights with really like him. And, you know, he's just living there. And he notices, the red B notices that there's civilians out. And so he's like, hey, folks, like, you guys need to go outside. Like, it's, or go inside. It's not safe out here. And as he goes back, he looks and he notices that the guys didn't Mm. follow him. They went the other way. And he's like, no, that's a dead end. They need to get out of there. And he turns to run back around and he's trying to, like, save them. And they're like, Hey, what's he saying? Like, I can't hear him over that. Mm. And about the time the war wheel comes up out of the ground Mm. and it destroys and maims and kills his battalion as he's sitting there. And it's revealed to us that that's just the dream that Richard's having as he's as they're flying over to wherever they're headed. Jeez. So and he just wakes up. He yawns, just wakes up stretching there in the plane. You see him back there? Well, it's not the first time he's had that dream. Oh, for sure. He's kind of used to it. And uh, he's like, all right, well, we made it safe and sound. So, like, I don't know what you're kind of talking about. You know, like, uh, 
I can't believe that you're incessant doubting of me. And he goes, well, when life throws obstacles at you, it's a little surprising when the 93-year-old that looks like a sleeping bag full of potatoes is a gift. (laughs) And he goes, we're right here. And so they're able to land. And he goes, welcome to the Amazon. This is where General Mortis said we'd be able to find the brain. And so they're out there and they're trying to find things. Uh, And he's like, you got to be careful out here, man. Like this place is, you know, crawling, which is dangerous, crazy, you know, predators all the time, all poisonous, like everything. Um, he's letting his bee fly around yeah, and enjoy is. it. Yeah, he goes, because, oh, that's, I meant to tell you, because while he's going, he goes, this is where the thing is, he goes, oh my Lord, Michael is loving it out here. <laughs> so much new and exciting flora for him to experience. That's right, Mike. Michael the bee is Michael in the there bee. too. And we get, how we, is he still alive? This is brought up. Yeah, okay. All this right. is, and All right. that, that it's, it's a very, and All the right, way I'm they waiting. do it. And he's like, you see these guys? Like, man, there's so much poison in these guys that could kill 20 grown men. And he's like, dude, look at your back. Like, you're covering them. Watch out. And he's like, oh, pff, you think I'm going to walk into the rainforest without my anti-venom helmet on? I'm not stupid. <laughs> so he's just sitting there cutting through the forest, like, you know, hacking away head. with, like, frogs on him the whole time. Uh, and he's like, do you think that I'm going – I love that. He's like, do you think that I'm going to sit here and, you know, lose uh, – where is it at? Oh. I got this giant – they got a giant centipede here that can, like, ke- catch bats and birds. It's dope, but, like, I'm not going to let it pull my dick off, man. Like, that's what he tells him. And he's like, no, sir. And he's like, why would a giant centipede be on your – and he's like, probably because I went to take a piss, and it was like, yum, that looks like a small mammal. I would eat that. Like, it's just the conversations he has yeah. when he's, like, going through yeah. that. And he goes, and I'm not going to die because something gave me a little bite. I'm going to die the way God intended. Mid eating a club sandwich, I just dipped in honey mustard. <laughs> Which uh, oh my God. new way to go out? That is so good. And about that time, he's like, "Hey, have you seen like this mad scientist supervillain guys? We're looking for a hangout here." As they come across guys with machine guns, and our next panel, it's yep, they all get the guns pulled up on them, and now they are <laughs> he says, tied this together. Is bullshit turn of events. Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> And he goes, I'm sorry, Richard. I should have never drug you into this. And now we're both dead because, like, I messed up. They're both tied back to back, sitting in chairs. In the but he has of the, the poison of frogs all over him yeah. still. Uh, and then we get. Oh, geez. he comes back. Here Mike. That is. was the other one. I was hoping you would miss the picture because he makes a full appearance. Here. That is fantastic. Ah, uh, Snowflame, our cocaine powered supervillain. Yes, we said cocaine powered wow. because this book has done a fantastic job of going back and using DC characters to their advantage here. Yeah. Um, and he's like, oh, what is this guy talking about? The beauty of it, too, is the way they made him talk in the 80s was like he was just, you know, this uh, – he, he talked like just very grandiose and yeah. just very bright. He talks more like a coke addict here. There's just yeah. nothing else. He's like a little action, a little excitement, baby. Like I just expect him – like the way – like well, his eyes are it, always red. his freaking nose the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's what I love. He's like, this place, man, used to be bumping – bumping and he's like now he's like my man brain had us smuggling like guns and drugs and jewels man we live life on the razor's edge man like you can just tell like by the way he's doing it cocaine fueled rant yeah and he's like if it was profitable man we'd be on it no matter how legal or dangerous but now he's got a smuggling recre or or recreations of rare trading cards (laughs) and he's like you hear that this guy works for the brain like you know the the base must be buying he's like dude we're dead meat. A fat lot of good, like, that's going to do us anyway. And he's like, and Snowflame can't be bothered. He's like, this crate here, knock off limited edition sneakers. Like, he's just <laughs> lost in his own world. He's like, if you can believe it, he's making more than he ever did, man. And, like, you know, what's the joy in all this, man? We used to be renegades. Now, now we're bored as hell. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill you two guys, right? <laughs> uh, don't know, like, what will, or I don't know what will make me uh, and my boys feel the best, you know. Uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna make it pop off. Uh, I don't know. Like I, I could, I could crush you with my bare hands. I could burn you. Cause remember when he does yeah. cocaine, yeah. his powers become the actual flame. The he, blue so flame. he has like an actual blue flame from his hand that he uses. Uh, and then we just see one of the, uh, workers that just says something in Spanish. Uh, or I'm sorry, I guess they're probably Portuguese. Uh, mm-hmm. if they're in the Amazon rainforest they're in Brazil. So in Portuguese, and Snowflame goes, feed them to the piranhas. Oh, shit, man. This guy. <laughs> this guy. Like, he's like, you know. And and Peacemaker's like, piranhas? Really, kid? So then Peacemaker's just like, what are you making? Uh, and the kid tells him. He's like, no, nah, man, you got to do it wrong. You got to go fast. Got to go fast. And he's like spinning the thing for him. as like batters just spinning everywhere. And so uh, Red B leans over and he's like, all right, get ready to make your move. Michael is working on the handcuffs. 
And he's like, dude, you just say crazy shit to me over and over. What is a bee going to be doing with handcuffs? Do you know what the kid was making? Uh, uh, ovos, uh, it's scrambled eggs. Okay. That yeah. makes sense then. So he's yeah. whipping up the eggs. Yeah. Um, and so he sits there and he's like, well, you keep saying stuff, but like, it doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? He's working on the handcuffs and he's like, he's very strong. And it shows Michael going into the <laughs> locks, but we get a flashback of the red bee lifting weights with Michael. And he's yeah. like, 98, 99. Wonderful, Michael. So that is why Michael is so strong. Right? Because he lets him lift weights he, he, while the other bees cheer, cheer him, him on. on. Yeah, baby. Uh, That's so dumb. So he's like, dude, uh, have you been training? Oh, did I miss something? Hold on. Uh, if I miss something, I feel bad now. There's one thing where they're talking about the dog. I'm sorry. I'll catch up. Yeah. Um, and I might not have. I think I missed it in issue three. But it is a very important part when it comes to the red bee. Um, he talks about. Maybe I didn't miss it. No. Okay. Um, but he was talking about when they were going to get there about how important bees are, that they can only sting once. Like oh, he brought does. Up, he does bring it up. Oh, wow. And that's why I'm trying to find, uh, the point. I don't think he's gotten to it yet. I think it comes up. I've later not seen anything going about it and I've been trying to read along okay. here. So then never mind. But it, it is brought up about, cause we talked about them, you know, him yeah. stinging once and stuff. They, yeah. they address that too. So Michael is able to get the handcuffs unlocked. And he's like, what have you been training these bees like nonstop since the war? Like, how long do bees live? And he's like, yes, but now like it's not the time to talk. Mm. And so like him and Michael go to take out the henchmen and he tells Peacemaker to like go take care of Snowflame. And so he's like, hey, man, if you want to, yeah, if you want to ingest something white and dangerous, I got these knuckles for you. <laughs> and he goes, hell yeah, let's party, big boy. And about that time, just another just giant whiff he takes. Mm. And I love the like he just buries his face, just shaking it in it. Fuel me, my my col colon. Oh, Cumu my goodness. Cum Cumulonimbus Nimbus stimulant, stimulant cloud. cloud. It's Cumulonimbus. a great line if I could say it. Cumulonimbus. Uh, and he just releases these powerful just mm. blasts of blue energy there. And he's like, whoa, cocaine does give this guy superpowers. All it did for me was make me grind my teeth and try to fight bears at the zoo. <laughs> uh, so the bee is like scaring away all the other henchmen. And he's like, man, you can't be scared of a bee in the Amazon. We've got way worse. And he goes, yeah, but it's after me. And he like he goes away. And Red Bee is like knocking the others out with his, that right hook. Yeah. So Peacemaker is fighting and, and getting, getting punched or zapped away. He loses his gun, right? So... About that time, Michael flies the gun back over to Peacemaker, to which we get <laughs> Peacemaker like, Michael, oh my goodness, you're so strong. And uh, Snowflame is a little too worried about his coke. So he's like, Snowflame. man, get away from my stash. And he takes the gun and shoots him directly in the face, but he just laughs it off because he's just so coked out, man. And he's like, I didn't know we were getting crazy in here. And he punches him away and he goes, let's get crazy then. And what does that mean? Well, I'm going to do more coke then. So he slams his God. face into the coke. And about that time, he pulls back. And one of those poisonous frogs is stuck in his nose. <laughs> because <laughs> Peacemaker, he goes, ha ha, suck on that. No one tries to feed me or my friends to piranhas. <laughs> and he goes, did you just Mickey his cocaine with a poison frog? Uh, and he goes, yeah, but I feel real bad for that frog. Oh, well, wait, no, never mind. There he is. And he just <laughs> crawls out of his nose and he hops away. Well, and they are surrounded by uh, a dozen bad guys that are just dead on the ground. Well, um, and the Red Bee did. He probably just knocked him out. Yeah. But I do love, like, the frog kills Snowflame and then just hops off. I don't know, man. He's got this one guy in a headlock still as he's talking That's to him. That's true. And he just flies off. And he's like, all right, tell us where we can find the brain's base then. And he's like, do you know where, like, the boxes come from? And the kid just points. And we see the island off in the distance. And then we get, uh -oh. they draw near. Are you ready for the upcoming violence and destruction? And it just says, I was born ready. And it's a picture of Deathstroke there. Mm. And now we get ready for issue five, which is Peacemaker being crawled on by baby Deathstrokes. Well, they're little babies they're little baby with eye patches and goatees. Yeah, because that's what Deathstroke looks like now mm. as an old man. He doesn't have the mask. Old man Deathstroke has the eye patch and the goatee. Gotcha. Um, There's a lot of them. Yeah. So, um, Johnny Blackout wants to go with him, and he tells him, like, you can't come with us. Like, you can't see. Like, you're not even looking the right way. 
Like, Red B and I are just going to go in and do this. Assassin me, boy. Yeah, he does. Red B tells oh, Black Hawk to stay with the plane. Like, we're going to need you to make our quick, ex- quick exit to get out of here. And he's like, you know, um, he's like, whether the flesh is willing or not, like, sometimes, you know, the body just always wants to keep fighting. That's all mm. he wants to do. And he goes, is that why you came all this way out here to help me rescue my dog? Is because that's above all beyond for a guy who's just supposed to be my pro officer. He goes, there's been something about this mission from the beginning. Like, you know, like I was supposed to be doing it. But also, he tells him, like, if you're a real hero, like, you know, like a real hero, and you see pain or injustice or suffering, like you do what you can no matter what, like you always yeah. do what needs to be done. Yeah. yeah. And he goes, dude, speaking of heroes, you know what you should have called yourself? The red wasp. Wasp will sting you until your tongues fall out, man. Here it is. <laughs> he goes, but bees, he goes, um, oh, but bees can only sting once and die. And he goes, well, me and bees have a similar outlook on things. He basically tells them like, you know, bees value family and the sanctity of life. And like, they know that with violence and death aren't always the answer for everything. Mm-hmm. And peacemaker's just like lame. Um, I didn't know this if it's true or not, but he tells me he's like, bees know what happened when they sting. Hmm. So he's like, so they know that they're sacrificing. Bees, I don't think bees really know. I don't know. Well, in this case, in our world here, sure. Cause it adds to it. He's sure. like, bees know what happens when they sting. Like they know that's significant. So are we saying that Michael has never, never stung, stung. Michael anyone? Has never stung. He's just, he's strong. He distracts. Okay. All right. He buzzes to scare people. Okay. And he like carries stuff, but he's never I'll go stung. with it. That's fine. Okay. Sure. I mean, that wasn't Michael that stung that one guy. Mm-hmm. And he goes to trade in your whole world. Like he's like, you know, that sacrifice, like to trade in everything. Yeah. Um, for that moment, like it has to be something really worth it. Right. The ultimate sacrifice. So then he tells him, and if bees really wanted it to kill something, they would just surround their prey and vibrate collectively on their bodies until it created enough heat and to <laughs> melt all their organs and their victim. And peacemaker goes, okay, now that's badass, Right. <laughs> so, Here's the thing. We get back to the conversation of he's like, uh, I still think it's gross though. It's all bee, you know, bees puke honey. And he's like, Chris, who who missed like who misled you? Like that's not that's not how any of this works. He's like, why do you why do you think about milk and eggs like cow piss and chicken poop? <laughs> and he's like, I mean, like they come somewhere. And he's like, did your dad not give you the birds and the bees talk? And he's like, I never got what that was supposed to be about. Uh, anyway, like what things that fly? And he's like, N- no. He's like, this whole time they're taking the cover off, off of, of like us. A- like a, this, yeah, yeah, like a drainage. Here's the thing, and I like to think, Mike, that this is a reference to Black Condor. Uh, it's not, but I like to think it is. Okay. Uh, he goes, Big Whoop, I could fly too. I've had wings and hollow bones. There you go. Um, but I'm sure it's just talking about birds. I like to think because that was a quality comic too. Yeah. Uh, I just like to squeeze it in wherever I can. I can tell you, though, Black Condor did fight Demolition Team. So, in the 80s. So, um, as they crawl through, he's like, We'll finish this later. Like, right now, let's focus on, you know, uh, getting out of here so we can get back to your weekend plans. Like, you know, you got things coming up. And he's he's going to try to have that party. Yeah, he's like, your weekend plans? And he's like, you really don't have anything lined up this weekend? He goes, how about this then? He's like, you know, we get back. Like, we'll share we'll share a beer. Uh, the bees and the red bee love a good beer. So he's like, he's... He's, he's almost uh, got a friend. Exactly. Like, Richard is actually how befriending sweet. him. Yeah, so they see that and he's like, oh, look at all these henchmen. And he's like, don't they all kind of look the same? And he's like, they're all probably clones. And he's like, oh, okay, well, if they're clones, then they're expandable. Dude, I'm going to kick so much ass. And he jumps <laughs> down there. And he's like, time to get murdered by peacemaker, idiots. And as he lands, all their clones are like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. No, no, why are we fighting? Like, the boss is that way. You want to fight him? And he's they're confused. And he's like, we aren't really fighting henchmen. We're more like experiment or like janitorial henchmen. That like we're the type of, we're, he goes, we're real life of the mind types. Jesus. And he goes, but you're evil. I beat up evil guys. And he goes, well, no, like we're actually not evil despite clones of somebody who's incredibly evil. Like it's just initiated some really r- compelling nature, <laughs> nature versus nature. Versus debate. nature. I love the, like, the thing. And they're like, we didn't like why. And they're like, no, like we that decided so that we're just going to leave. I love that. He goes, we're, we've decided we're just all going to leave uh, because he rejected our body. He'd been in that ooze too long, so it rejected his original body. Huh. Anyway, we're all pretty smart and can see what's coming next, so we're all going to flee. Oh, wait, he's saying that they were in the ooze too long. And They're so the brain's original that's body. That's the brain, his brain yeah, can't gotcha, gotcha, fit gotcha, into gotcha. one of them. Gotcha. So, like, you know, we're going to flee in mass. We're not sure how the world will welcome 50 clones of the same man, but we're going to find out together. Oh, Lord. Uh, so then they sneak through the clone. Oh, so it must many be the cloning them. lab. And, like, did 
do you think th- that he's cloned Deathstroke with his new body yet? And they're looking around, and Redby's like, I think he has. Like, looking at all these Deathstroke babies. A ton of little babies with a ton of little eye patches. patches. And, like, <laughs> you're standing in front of, like, number 49, number 50. Yeah. And he's like, please, don't make, don't wake the baby Deathstrokes. <laughs> and whispering it. And Peter goes, what do you say? Yeah. And about Very that loud. time, you woke the Deathstroke babies. And it leads oh into God. a battle all between the, the Red Bee Peacemaker and all these babies. You just see one panel of it. And I so love good. them beating up afterwards. And Red Bee just says, I can't believe how many babies we just had to fight. So they don't, oh, obviously, they don't so show good. it. But it's just. And he's like, man, I'm not going to sleep for like a month. I feel like crying right now is what Peacemaker says as they walk off. And he's like, well, you did say you wanted to fight. And he's like, not, that's not what I meant, man. Like, we'll fight a bunch of babies. Yeah, we'll fight a bunch of clones. And he's like, oh, it's Deathstroke. We're all going to die. And he's like, no, I'm not Deathstroke. I'm Teen Deathstroke. What? <laughs> I love how you go back up. They've got the thing that says Deathstroke, world's deadliest assassin, probably the most dangerous man on earth, severe badass. Then he says, I'm Teen Deathstroke. And and this is the comic telling you, sorry, Teen Deathstroke, clone teenage version of the stuff, stuff we so said before. before. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, so it's good. And he still breaks him out and he goes, and Brain said I have to kill all the intruders, but he's not even my real dad. <laughs> and he's like, but he also told me like I was going to be the best assassin in the world when I grow up. But that's like so much pressure. That's a messed up thing to say. Like, how am I is he, like supposed to be able to deal with that stuff? Uh, he's like, you know, and it's not like he's even toxic or anything. This is while they're fighting. While they're fighting, he's, Team he's Deathstroke, going he's like, on and on about like, his team problems and all that. Yeah. And eventually, Peacemaker's like, man, I know how you feel. Like with that burden of disappointment. He's like, my dad wanted me to be a machine of war and train me to kill from birth. And nothing I did was ever good enough. But you know what I realized? Like, they start bonding yeah. over their shitty yeah. dads. And so he's like, you know, when you go to an airport, you have to take off your shoes. And they scan you and stuff. And you give blood and it gets screened. Like, you have to apply as a car test. But there's nothing to keep any old I've loser from becoming a dad. I've said this myself before. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, dude puts a baby in someone's belly and think they're king of the world, man. Uh and he goes, but like, you know, a good dad wouldn't tell you that you suck, man. Like, he would tell you that, you know, you're good enough, despite what other assholes say. Like, he's having, like, this real moment, kind of like with the kid here. And you can see, like, the red bee in the background, like, kind of being like, oh, oh, like, you know, appreciating what he's saying. And he's like, you know, a good dad would let you fight your battles. <laughs> or wouldn't let you fight him alone. He'd let you, you know, help you here. And he's like, they'd ask you what you'd want to do, and they'd support it. And he goes, I just, I just want to dance and play video games. And he tells him. The Danes will play video games, man. And he goes, maybe I will. You know, my favorite part of that, go back up, is where Teen Deathstroke's sword hits, oh, hits the, the other panel above hits it. Hits the other panel yes, and makes and an like indention. Makes yeah, it's it. very good. And he's like, good. You deserve to be happy. You deserve it. And he's like, whatever. And he like moonwalks away from them as he leaves. <laughs> and they're like, all right. I think we're going to uh, – that could have gone a lot worse. He goes, yeah, man. Any chance – we don't have any chance against an older Deathstroke – or anything older than a baby Deathstroke for that fact. And they see, they've come across Bruce Wayne, and he's there. Um, and he's like, oh, man, we miss you. And, like, Red Bee's looking around at all this stuff, and he notices the, the war, war will is there. Yeah. And he has flashbacks again. And he's like, oh, it can't be. He hates that thing. And it's like, you know, Richard, look, uh, you know, uh, he missed so much. Uh, he missed me so much, but he's just so taken about. He's like, Brain made all these. I can't believe. And then about that time, mm. Brain does appear as a character named Warhammer, which he has Warmaker. donned himself. I'm sorry, Warmaker, which yeah. he has donned himself. It's Brain inside of uh, a clone Deathstroke's body. He looks kind of bad. Huh? Genius level criminal intellect, perfect physical form, bred for combat, a deadly combination. Yeah. And then I do love that Richard realizing now that like he killed his group is like, you killed them. You killed my boys. Michael is holding him back by the beard, which I think is hilarious. And also Peacemaker is saying, I hope you both choke on to death on a fart. Yeah, so. to to the gorilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, he's saying it to the gorilla. But I love how Michael the Bee is holding Red Bee yeah, back by his yeah, beard. Back like his he beard. can tell he is pissed. Yeah. And so the two of them start fighting back and forth. Um but uh, Peacemaker uses his laser beam to knock the sword out of his hand, and uh, the gorilla comes and punches <laughs> punches Peacemaker, and it knocks him out. While he's knocked out, he has a flashback, and he tells him, like, aren't you going to say anything to me, Dad? Don't you know what today is? And he goes, yeah, um, it's another day I have to tolerate your useless face. Jeez. And about that time, like, he starts waking back through, and... Um, 
You can tell that the oh, we can see. Yeah, you see like Red B getting beaten up by Warhammer, our Warmaker. And Warmaker tells him like, "All right, it's done. I'm gonna reunite with your boys soon enough." And the B comes through because he's like, "Michael, no, yeah, don't." Yeah. And he's like, "Be gone, you and Feral B." And Michael, oh, the rain's starting to come down yeah. hard. The Michael in here, it's 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 a rainy day in the neighborhood. Oh, and uh, then Michael, Michael decides he into sees. His- he, eye. he sees his eyes, the only thing available, and Michael decides to give the ultimate sacrifice. Wow. And he stings uh, War Maker in the eye. Oh. So Red B <laughs> is obviously crushed. But he says, my good eye. Yeah, <laughs> it's his only eye. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, no, no. Oh, Michael, no. And Michael dies then in the Red yeah. B's hand. Yeah. And about that time, Red B, in a livid state, takes oh, wow. the sword and just straight up, he makes sure to slice him at the like the uh-huh. brain yeah. cable, so you just see the brain fly up through the body. Yeah, right. And he's like, "Great, now I'm gonna have to transplant it to a non- another body." Just when I was getting broken used to this one. Oh, I didn't tell you. There's a joke in there. Um, uh, I actually, I'm not gonna ruin the moment. It's a good moment yeah. right now. I'll tell yeah. you later. I got you. Uh, the brain just kind of sits there and flops around, and it looks like Bruce Wayne's about to grab it, and he does, and he grabs and just starts shaking the mess out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and the gorilla just knocks him away, and he runs over, and Richard goes to check on Peacemaker, and he asks where Bruce is, and the gorilla dumps the brain back into this green, liquid here, green, green liquid. Green electric liquid. And he's like, oh, here's what's happening. And about that time, it's like the whole building has come alive. What's this? And they turn and look, and it's oh a giant God. green blob. And oh, Peacemaker chemo. says, it's chemo. Chemo is a giant, nigh-instructable form Filled with toxic chemicals and acid, and it's now Brain's new body. Jeez. And that is where That's we end issue one. five. Here we close out our story to see if they can rescue Bruce Wayne. So, as Chemo or the Brain in Chemo's body is starting to tear everything apart, um, he starts. Oh, Mala runs away as Chemo mm-hmm. is tearing the whole like fortress apart, trying to get out of there. Um. And Peacemaker carries after him. The two get into a fight. Well, and the thing that Peacemaker's pissed off about is the fact that not that he shot him in the back, that he pretended he, to be his, his friend. friend yeah. Right? That's yeah. worse than anything is what he tells yeah. him. Like, you stole my dog. You shot me in the back. Worse than all, you pretended to be my friend. He punches him and it says, Soccer, Soccer blue. blue. And it knocks him out. <laughs> and he's like, are you okay? And he's like, man, I hate that stupid monkey. And he, like, shoots a laser at him. And it hits him. And it's this burnt hair smell. It's his, his burnt hair smell. So I'm assuming he gets him because Chemo yeah. then yells out, Mala, and picks him up, and it's a yeah. limp kind of monkey there. He goes, you could have killed him, you insolent fool, and he, like, sprays acid at him, and he's able to get away. Chemo sprays acid at him, and he's able well, to he's get away from Well, he's able to get him. away with, with Bruce Wayne with in Bruce his Wayne. arms. Yeah. It's hard to spit when you haven't had a mouth for over decades, is what he says, <laughs> I know, which is funny. So... Peacemaker is trying to laser beam brain in Chemo's body. By saying laser beam. By laser saying beam, laser, beam, laser beam. beam. And it's not helping. So they're destroying all the war weapons in two. And he's like, you aren't even supposed to be here. You're supposed to be dead. Uh, fine. You want to destroy everything I have? I'm going to go destroy you know, everything you love, the rest of your world. So uh, brain in Chemo's body breaks out of the fortress and goes to like head out towards the world there to mm. cause as much destruction as possible. Um, uh, it shows all the clones <laughs> leaving in mass and one of them telling them, hey, you know, are you really not going to help Road Jr.? And it's Team Deathstroke. And he's like, you're not my dad. I don't have to listen to you. And he's playing his <laughs> video games. Um, and he's like, we'll stop him, Richard. I don't know how we're going to. Or we have to stop him. And he's like, I have an idea. And the two of them hop in the oh, war wow. wheel or, and, and they go after him. And he's like, do you think that this is going to stop chemo? And the Red B tells him the only thing that stopped the war will was the war ending itself. So, like, I think this is going to do a good job. And he's like, I'm sorry, man, but there's no coming back from this one. And he's like, what do you mean, Richard? I, I wouldn't have brought the dog if I knew this was a suicide run. <laughs> and he goes, well, I guess this is it, little man. Talking to Bruce. Talking to Bruce. Yeah, Peacemaker's talking to Pug Bruce Wayne. And he goes, I wish we could have had more time, but uh, at least we'll, we'll be together in the end. And he sits there and he goes over to Red B and he goes, hey, Richard. I want to thank you for not betraying me uh, and humiliating me like my last team up. Mm. And he's like, man, I really appreciate that. Yeah. And so Red B. The Red B looks like super solemn. He does. And he sits there. I do kind of love this. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, And he goes, you asked me once how I could be so positive all the time. And he like sits there and he like gives him the story and he tells him like, you know, when my squadron died, like I never had – 
you know, any kind of day. They never had any kind of day again. So, like, I made sure that I would have, you know, the most beautiful day yeah. that I could then for them. Um, and he tells them that, like, you know, I've dis- uh, I've, dedicated my- I've dedicated myself to living a life without regret. He basically and- is telling how everything goes back to his guys dying via the war yeah, wheel. Yeah. And this is kind of closing the circle for him, for I him, guess. Yeah. He is. And he's Driving like, you know, the war there's wheel. There's an evil, vile tidal wave crashing yeah. relentlessly against the world. That's churning water, smash the good and drown the kind. Mm. It's really good. Yeah, um, and he goes, good. every uh, every moment of this existence is unjust turmoil and yeah. chaos. And I love Peacemaker goes, geez, Richard, I didn't know you were a poet. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. And he's like, this world. Uh, oh, he's like, uh, this world. He like essentially tells him, like, could yeah. use some peace. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you something, Chris, because I don't think that uh, anyone ever, ever has. Yeah. And he just sits there and tells him what he nobody says else you're has a good told kid. him the whole story. Yeah, he says yeah. you're a good kid and you're, you're trying as hard kid. as you can. You're a great hero. That's awesome. Yeah. And then he tells him. He said, I'm sorry for what comes next. Yeah, I'm sorry uh, for what comes next. But, you know, I got to keep on having no regrets. Uh, and he's like, so I got to do this. And he's like, do what? And so he kicks. Kicks Peacemaker, uh, Peacemaker and, and Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. He says, I believe in you, Peacemaker. And he goes, and if no one else tells you. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. That's been his party the whole time. <laughs> wow. That's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So. Even though he's falling to his death with his dog. He's not falling. But Wow. Well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 So the whole party going on the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it shows you the only one who really cared in all of it. Yeah. Red B. Red B. Yeah. So uh, they sit there and Peacemaker's like, no, no, no. As the war wheel just kind of spins and goes, goes towards after chemo, chemo, yeah, and it sits chemo there. Chemo is a dumb looking he evil is a dumb villain, looking yeah, because he's just a glob. He goes, and the thing just spins through and it crushes. And he's got the right, dead monkey on him, yeah, right into him and Mala yeah. as it causes him to just kind of explode and melt and just die. There. So it takes care of two things: Mala the war and wheel the, and Mala, yeah, yeah. and and, and, and the all three of things, them. Yeah, yeah, all of them, yeah. So about that time, there's a plane that comes in. He's like, "Oh no, Richard, what have you done?" And they're like, yeah. I see you, Peacemaker. We're coming in for evac. Just grab the ladder. And it's Amanda Waller. And mm. it shows two days later that Peacemaker is back at um, Richard's Jeez. house. He's at the aviary. At the aviary. Or the, right. No, the aviary. The apiary? Apiary. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Aviary is birds. birds. Apiary is And he is undoes bees. the thing, and he lefts, lets the bees out. And he has oh, beer with him. Oh, my God. Come on. And he goes, he goes. He, he said <sighs> when I when we got back, we'd have a beer. Can I Can I guess? He's going to kill all the bees? No. With beer? No, no, no. Oh, okay. It, it's, it's a nice I moment. I just thought it would be fitting if it he would. just pours beer and it kills all the bees. <laughs> that is, but no, that this is actually great. a nice moment. Yeah. And he goes, he said that when we got back, we'd have, you know, a beer yeah. together. But, and he goes, I yeah. looked it up on the internet. Bees love beer, apparently. So, <laughs> and so he opens one for them, like shakes it a bit and it foams it out. And he sets it like on a there. duff. It does, doesn't it? And he uh-huh. sets it on the edge there and he holds one up. Yeah. And he says to Richard. Yeah. Um, and he then he sits there and he's like, yeah, and he downs it while he's crying. He's like, you guys are so lucky. You know that? <laughs> he's like, you had a really good dad who, who really cared and gave a shit about you guys. Like, he's having that moment. Yeah. Um, and so he's just, it's a really nice heartfelt moment. And all the bees are like, like, it's funny because it's like different bees coming by yeah. and like taking a drink as he's like kind of eulogizing. Yeah, that's funny. Um, Look at him with his little bees. Yeah, and with his little bees. And then he sits there and he pulls something out of his pocket. He's like, you know. Uh, we he goes we. Is it the domino mask? It is. Yeah. yeah. He tells him like I know I'm gonna so be sad, right. but we shouldn't be like for him. Yeah. And he uncurls and it leaves it there with as he with walks the away. And the all bees. the bees are going to the mask. Yeah. It, yeah. it has like cool. it has like the old it has the old little pull tab yeah. over it too on the can. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. old pull tab yeah. instead yeah, of the old timey one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and it, and the bees kind of lay out the mask there. Yeah. Then we get to him flipping burgers. Very close up picture of some burgers. And flipping burgers. And it goes, Bruce Wayne, stop eating dog shit, is what he says. <laughs> and he's like yelling at Bruce Wayne. And about that time, Delmont shows up oh, in a body cast. And I love cast. that Delmont has a speech bubble, but it is wrapped up in bandages just like Delmont. Well, not only that, he has a flap where he gets to pee. Wait, that's taped up. That's taped up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it says, Delmont says, you shouldn't smash them down like that. They're losing their juices. And he smashes it down even more. And he goes, you got to make sure they're cooked all the way through, dude. And he goes, you should really listen to Delmont. And he's like a three-time Burger County grilling champion. 
And he's like, all God, right, God well, dang, I love the fact that his speech bubble's like that. Yeah. It's so good. It is. And he's like, uh, we really appreciate you guys coming. It's a speech bubble, but it's just covered in bandages. It is. And so you then, can't even read it. Then the cashier from the uh, store, from the grocery <laughs> store shows up. Then the guy from the sewage plant so shows up. Um, the I next door neighbor. The next door neighbor shows up. And he's like, who, come on, Craig. Nobody's going to quit talking about the tree, man. Who does have a, a shirt on that, that says, on the back of it has an arrow pointing to his ass. And it says, kiss is five dollars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then inside the living room uh, is all the suicide squad there. And they're like, what are we doing here, Waller? Like, I'd rather be back in prison. And they're like, this, this place smells like a high school boys wrestling team. And everything's curiously sticky. Curiously sticky. And she sticky. goes, I don't want to be here more than you guys did. But he did save the world, and it is his birthday. That was so, my gamer tag, curiously sticky. Nice. He's like, so we'll just show our faces and get out of here. And like, he brings in the burgers, and he's like, hey, I haven't got a vegetarian option for you, Harley. And she goes, it's just <laughs> celery on celery a bun. Celery on a bun. And so. He tried. Yeah. Uh, Waller thanks him for it, and he's like, all right. Uh, yeah, no, you're welcome, I think. Uh, and it shows. Uh, I, she's like, I apologize for the rudeness and everything, and we didn't bring a birthday gift. And he's like, Oh, your presence is enough. And it shows that there's a cake with the open protein powder. So I'm mm-hmm. assuming that he figured out how to make muscle cake. I'm assuming. Um, and he's pulling some out of the warmer, and Blackhawk comes out with smooches all over his face. Oh my god! And he goes, Oh, I guess I got to take her flying now. And about that time, it's the, uh, the girl from waitress the bar. from the bar. Yeah. And he goes, I thought that you said you didn't want to babysit old men, Georgia. And she goes, don't shame me for my issues, peacemaker. (laughs) And he's like, nope, I never would. And she just kind of walks away. And he takes burgers in. Or he got pizza rolls out of the oven. He goes, Destra, or Dance Stroke. Dance Stroke. Dance Stroke. I got your pizza rolls, my dude. And then we see the speech bubble from the TV. I'm the honey dipper, man. He's watching porn. He's watching his VHS porn. Uh, It is. And like one of them says, two two ladies, three fellers. (laughs) Um, and it's like, and, but Dance Stroke goes, these videos are amazing. You really just found them out in the woods? And, <laughs> and she goes like, it's like buried treasure. And he's like, all right, yeah, I, oh, if, you're, if you want cake, like, you know, we got some out here if you're interested. But Dance Stroke's too busy with that. And about that time, Demolition's uh. like, all right. You know, this is the time that we show up and show him that he messed with the wrong guy. Like he's These here. These bastards just don't go there's away. There's his car. He's like, he may have gotten the best of us last time, but he's not going to get this lucky this time. Like, we're going to take care of him this time, right? And he, and she's like, uh, or where's the line? She goes, but he's got lucky. There's three of us and only one of him. We walk in. And they don't even realize that the whole friggin' suicide squad is there. Boys right? today, when, yeah. right, when we get there, let's just unleash a stream of violence right up his butthole, boys. And oh, Scoop Shovel goes, <laughs> raises his hand and goes, just to be clear, we are we literally targeting his butthole? Jeez. And they're like, damn it, Scoop. I'm just saying, like, let's beat him up real good. I it's love like, oh. dumb bad guys. It does. And like, she Those just like hits her head against like the post of the porch there. He's like, I'm glad you clarified because I didn't know either before we were going in. <laughs> and about that time, they kick in and they go, let's do this. And it's opened with the full page. Welcome to the party, assholes. Yeah. And it's Peacemaker it's all of them. with all of them behind them. And that is where Peacemaker tries hard in. Dance stroke. Uh, dance stroke. So there you That's go. That's very good. So yeah, I thought you would enjoy it. That was it. a well I thought it was series. a really good story of the Red Bee. Um, I, I just love the fact that it continues the TV show. And it basically. is a continuation yeah. of the TV show. And it Which is we've got a second hilarious. season coming very soon. We do. And yeah. there's jokes in there that I like, just gly- I glossed good shit, over. It oh, yeah. was really good. Like, especially when it was all the all the props and all the <laughs> stuff and all the callbacks. Yeah. It's oh, great. There, there's also a part in there where uh, when they first bust in and Brain has the new body. Mm-hmm. And he's like telling like what he's been up to. And he goes, oh, for the first while. Me, because there was a joke making off like you know the first thing he's gonna do is just jerk off once he gets new body now he can and it's brought back up he goes man for the first forty eight hours me and Mala just gave each other tandy handies and I'm like what the hell <laughs> oh man oh uh, that was but great there you go. man peacemaker tries hard yeah. explicit but very fun comic to look very at good. and a very uh, fun look at the Red B as well God, I, I hope we, we get, get the right pug the Red in the TV show Bruce Wayne that would be great uh, it would be funny I love that the and that that's the joke is they just mistake he talks about mm-hmm. Bruce Wayne the pug mm-hmm. and they think he mm-hmm. really means Bruce Wayne but as always thank you guys for taking the time out to listen next <laughs> week uh, we were potentially going to do I don't know I don't know what we're going to do we, yeah. I was I was going to do the new uh, Supergirl at some point in time yeah uh, might hold off on that. Don't know. I'll have something exciting. It'll be good. I mean, we've been on a roll here. When here does great the stuff new uh, Under the Trees? Oh, we're oh, we will do that this month too. Okay. Uh, I wrapped it up. Yeah. It wrapped up. Man, 
fantastic. Good. Okay, cool. Oh, it was I'm so looking good. Forward to that. It was yeah. so good. So we'll cover that this or in the month of June. You can look forward to that. Also, I need to get Patrick Horvath on to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that would be too. wonderful. Um, I'm going to shoot him an email this week. So Great. Cool. We'll do that. But uh, as always, thank you guys for taking the time out to listen. Make sure to check out the other podcasts on the Rogue Media Network family of stations. RogueMediaNetwork.com. And until next time, stay safe, everybody. Hey, Gallicon. Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about This has been a Rogue Media Network production.